as you can see. Chaos, right? Chaos. In my defense, uh, <laughs> when we first planted the garden, uh, we were noticing that there were a lot of detrimental insects. Um, we had a really bad aphid problem. Of course, there were ants colonizing the aphids. It was a big issue. Um, there were some other issues going on, any kind of like leaf eating bugs, etc. And we noticed that there was a week that we didn't mow. And then the following week when the grass was longer, there we just had a backyard full of ladybugs. And pollinators were coming because the weeds were flowering. And it seemed like the right answer to just let it grow. I had seen on a few homesteading channels that it's hard to get ladybugs established in the yard. And I felt like I'd stumbled on a secret, you know? I mean, look at these adorable beauties. I have so many other photos, but I don't think we need to see 50 photos of blurry ladybugs. Anyway, I thought the secret to keeping these beneficial insects was to just not mow the yard. Um, but now look at it. As the plants continued to grow, I was amazed. I mean, these beautiful flowers and plants were growing everywhere. They were so abundant and various in our yard that I was sure that the previous owner of the house had cultivated these flowers and that they'd reseeded. I mean, we already had evidence that he landscaped, right? We have the two rose bushes and this beautiful hedge type thing after all. So these had to be reseeds from the previous owner, right? Wrong. But again, all started with dandelions? Like, I don't know how this keeps happening to me. Um, remember how I said that I had set the idea of lotion bars aside because dandelion season was over, right? I already had rose lotion oil infusing and I thought that that would be perfect until outside our entire yard filled up with dandelions. I mean, it, they were so prolific everywhere. They were all over my job site too. I had plans to go over the weekend with a basket and just harvest as many as I could. I mean, there were, there were thousands that I could pick. And because there were thousands, I so out of character decided to research the best way to preserve them, right? So like, what can you do with roots to preserve them? Um, pretty sure you can dry the leaves and the flowers, but what are ways that I can process this, especially on like that large of a scale. And I'm so glad that I did. <laughs> I w have been trying to find this website again. And I can't find it, so I can't give credit to them. But they let me in on like a weird, I, w I don't want to say secret, right? But it's a revelation that I didn't know would come into my life. Imposters, like dandelion imposters. Did anybody else know that that was a thing? Like, I know I've never really thought about what makes a dandelion a dandelion, but at the same time, like, I didn't think that I would be swindled either, you know? <laughs> but here I am. What's worse is that when I went to go Google the name of that, like, dandelion imposter, a website from Washington State's um, Noxious Weed Control Board popped up, and I clicked on it because I'm responsible. <laughs> And it's a noxious weed. First of all, I didn't even know that there were such things as noxious weeds. I just, like, when you say weeds, you think weeds are weeds are weeds, and people just don't like the way that they look because it messes up their, their green grass lawn, right? No, no. Like, it can destroy local ecosystems. And so Washington's noxious board, noxious weed control board, like, took me down this wild rabbit hole of information. Like, in Washington State specifically, they have three classes, A, B, and C, and homeowners are mandated to control certain weeds, all Class A's and some Class B's, depending on your county. And that's, you know, that's not something I knew that I needed to know being a homeowner. And I thought, no, this is like out of control, right? There's no way that this is this serious. And I started researching it and no, like imported plants, whether it's from another county, another state um, outside of the country, they can destroy local e ecosystems. They're bad for livestock, they're bad for crops, they're bad for even rivers. Here in Washington, uh, salmon runs are incredibly vital. <laughs> and um, that's for salmon production in the entire country, actually. And there are, um, one type specifically of, uh, riverbank growing noxious weeds that are absolutely beautiful. 
but they're noxious weeds, which means that it kills all the local fauna, which lives in harmony with the river, which then kills the salmon. So they have these huge efforts where they go and they try to purge all these noxious weeds so that the salmon can survive, so that, you know, the people in the United States can continue eating that, that good, good fish. I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, so let's get back. Let's get back to these beautiful flowers that I thought were reseedlings. Noxious weed, noxious weed, noxious weed, noxious weed. These are all weeds that I'm mandated to get rid of. Everything that was so beautiful in my yard was actual, actually detrimental to Washington. And I know that I don't have a huge yard, right? So like my yard alone is not gonna change the ecosystem of the entire state. But I wanted to do the, not even the right thing, but the best thing. I wanted to plant flowers or shrubs or just a whole plethora of plants that pollinators and local fauna would love. Uh, the hedges that I put in my front yard are specifically not butterfly bush, which is a noxious weed here in Washington state, but it's a California lilac, which is, it does the same thing. It brings pollinators. They're beautiful, but they're not detrimental to the local um, fauna ecosystem. Um, and so I want to go ahead and, and plant more beneficial plants. And while I was on Washington State's noxious weed control board website, um, I saw that they actually give away a free pack of like pollinator seeds slash like local to Washington seeds. So I am hoping to plant those next spring in a, like a special area of our yard. Um, so I can see what's in the packet and maybe every year I just make that area bigger and bigger so that instead of <laughs> letting my yard, you know, grow, let it grow, um, I let it responsibly grow instead of noxious weed grow. And maybe that's not a big, like noxious weeds in general aren't a big deal to you guys. Maybe you're more like my husband who came home with a couple herbicides. Um, and I had to ask him not to use them because... Well, like a couple things. First of all, like, I don't know exactly where our gardens are going to go, right? Like I continuously ask him to expand our garden. Like, oh, I want, you know, a wheat bed over here. Stay tuned for that. Oh, I want, you know, this, um, like rock garden built up so that I can plant those like pollinator, uh, seeds next year. Um, I want maybe like a shaded garden just cause there's one spot that does get some, some shade and I want to do it just to do it really no good reason, but <laughs> Aiden doesn't know that one yet. Anyway, um, if we use herbicides, I run the risk of contaminating that soil and you're really not supposed to use any place to grow food that's had an herbicide on it for three to five years. Not to mention the fact that if I ever wanted to make my sunflower oil certified organic, like we can't use that anywhere on our plot, I think. I actually haven't done the full research for that. Um, but I also just don't want to risk it, right? Like I, I want to make things more difficult for myself by, by pulling these weeds. So I'm going to start off by mowing them and then from there we'll, we'll get them under control eventually. That's why it took me so long to plant the sunflower bed is that I had to actually take all those weeds out. And, um, through that process, actually, I realized that pulling out weeds is a lot easier than dealing with grass. So instead of trying to pull all of the weeds that are currently in the yard, I am just going to mow them until winter time when everything kind of dies. And then it's going to be super easy to identify where those weeds are and I'll be able to pull them out. I bought this wild tool, um, but it takes finessing and like we learned in the sunflower video, like I'm not, I'm not really good at finessing, right? So um, I keep leaving like three inch holes in the ground. I am who I am. Um, yeah, so hopefully by winter time I'll like have figured it out and I'll be able to accurately use it um, without leaving huge holes in the ground. But I'm gonna do it another time lapse. Might be the whole theme of this, I don't know. Mostly because everything that I do, I have to undo and when I undo it, it takes exponential amount of time. I also don't even know if our mower is gonna be able to handle it and I might have to like get the weed whacker out and like weed whack as if it was like a scythe, like a grass harvester. I'm not looking forward to it. Also, it's way later than I wanted to start, uh, which means it's already really hot outside. Um, 
for me, like in Washington state, anything above 55 is hot for us. Um, the sun is out, so I've got my, my weed eye protection because I know that it's, there's gonna be lots of debris coming and trying to attack me. Um, and I'm gonna put on my hat so I don't get sunburned. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a really sweaty morning and uh, I hope you enjoy watching me suffer <laughs> the consequences of my own actions. <laughs> Great news. The battery for the lawnmower has already died. I have a second one. <laughs> I went, what, what was that, like three passes? What is this, what is the time lapse video gonna be? Like five seconds? I just, let me, I don't know, you can't really see. I don't wanna move the camera around and get anybody motion sick, but like, If I had to give it a percentage of like what we've accomplished <laughs> with our little battery, um, 10%, maybe, might be eight. This might take multiple <laughs> days. <laughs> How come like all of my projects, why do they, why do they all take multiple days? Like what am I, why am I such a mess? Ah, commence second battery. that's it second battery <laughs> also gone um so they're both on the charger I'm not quite sure how long it's gonna take for either of them to to get charged enough for me to keep going I do want to get it done before my husband gets home he has really bad um, allergies and so the sooner I can like agitate all this stuff and it can settle back down, um, the better it will be. I'm really tired, I'm really hot, I'm really sweaty. I'm not tired, I'm not a wimp. Well, I wish that my work was done, but I actually need to get the wood chips on the sunflower bed and then um, pull some more weeds. But, um, Aiden bought some flower seeds that he wants to plant and I want to help him out. It's another reason I want to make sure to get the mowing done so that when he comes out here to plant them, he, let, he doesn't die. Um, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs>